Hello, and welcome back to our Node.js and Express tutorial series here on Turbo 360. In part one, we downloaded the code base that we're going to use as the foundation of our portfolio site. And we got everything set up locally, made sure it ran properly on our machine, and then we deployed to a staging environment to make sure that it works uh, properly on a server as well. So we got all that confirmed, so now we're going to move on to the actual code base, start digging through the architecture, and setting up our own UI for our portfolio site. So let's uh, let's get into it. So here I am at the uh, with the code base already open. I'm going to going to open up my terminal and make sure you're in the root directory of your project. And I'm going to run the dev server to make sure everything still works locally uh, like we like we expected. So let's go ahead and open up localhost 3000. Reload that. Everything looks good. So we're in business. So let's go ahead and turn off the server. And uh, let's start digging into the actual code. So as I was saying in video one, uh, every node project revolves around the package.json. And uh, we already covered this in video one, so I'm going to move on to the next part, uh, which is going to be the app.js file. Sometimes this is also called index.js on Node Express projects. But they fundamentally do the same thing. They, they create the application, and then they configure a lot of its settings, like where to store assets, uh, image assets, where to store CSS files. Um, how to handle certain situations uh, like routing and whatnot, and they in, in a Node Express environment, we also install what's called middleware, and that's what's happening on line 15. So a lot of the configuration is done through what's called middleware. Now I'll explain middleware in in a, in a subsequent video, but for this video, the mo most important thing happens down here, starting on line 19, uh, where we import what's called routes, and that's happening here on line 19 and 20. We're importing routes, and then on lines 24, 25, and 26, we're setting routes. So uh, what are routes? So routes are uh, files that handle requests. Uh, and a request is basically any any time a person go visits your website, that person is making a request. And those requests typically go to a route, and then the route configures a response and sends back the response to the browser, or it might be like an iPhone or something like that. And that's the request routing. And those routes are being are maintained in these route files right here. And if you look closely at line 20, you'll see it says uh, slash routes. That means the actual route files are stored in a folder called routes right here. So if I expand this, you'll see two routes, page and vertex. That's right here, page and vertex. So those are the two routes that are primarily maintaining this entire website right now. So uh, these route files are, are doing what I explained a moment ago. They are taking requests, generating a response, and then sending that response back to the server. Lines tw Line 24 and 25 and 26 uh, but most importantly, line 24 is setting those routes. So a route is connected to what's called a path. And the path is basically the URL pattern in the in a browser. So www.etc.com, uh, that that's the path. And uh, when you see a path like this on line 24, that's just a backslash. That stands for the home path. So this is the, sometimes called the root path, the root path or the base path. Uh, these are the home paths. So the home page request is being handled by this page route right here. So if I go to, if I run the dev server, <clears throat> and I visit the home page, the page.js route is the one that's handling that this particular request. And that's happening right here, starting on line 5, going all the way down to line 34. Uh, now there's a lot going on here, so we won't worry about all this right now. In fact, what we're going to do is set up our own route to handle home page requests. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's set up our own route. So let's go ahead and turn off the dev server. And let's in our terminal, let's change directory to the routes folder, because that's where the routes are stored right now. And let's create our own route, which is, going to, which is going to become the foundation of our portfolio site. So we already have two routes called page and vertex. Let's create another one called main. And that's going to be our route. It's going to be the main route for the, for the website. And let's go ahead and set this guy up. So open this up. And let's copy from the page.js route the first two lines. 
and then on go back to the page JS route and go all the way to the bottom and grab that last line right here module.exports and now let's go ahead and set up our request routing so we grab what's called the router and then we set up a get handler and uh, basically uh, requests come in a variety of forms uh, there's a get, there's a post, there's something called a put and a delete, but almost all requests are gets. So when you visit your your browser and you hit your localhost 3000 or your, your staging URL, you're making a get request. So we're setting up a get handler and this denotes the, the path, so this is going to be the home path. And in a Node Express project, every route takes a, a function argument, and that's this right here, and the function argument takes its own two arguments, uh, request and response. And this is pretty much exactly what they sound like. This is the request, the localhost 3000, and within that request comes some additional information, and then our job is to create an appropriate response to send back to the, the browser, or what's called the client. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, we're going to send back a hello, <clears throat> excuse me, a hello message, and that's going to be our route uh, right now. So now let's connect this route by going back to our app.js, and let's import that route. From the routes folder. Notice here you don't need to add the JS extension, it's automatic. And uh, right here where we're using the page route, uh, let's set up another handler for that. And I'm going to comment out the page route for now. Okay, so what we did was we replaced the original home page route with our own main route right here. And on the home page request, it simply sends back a hello string, and that's it. So let's go ahead and test it out. So go back to the root directory of the project, and let's do turbo dev server. And when we reload the home page, we should see our hello message right here. And that's good. That means we have taken over the route, the home page route, and now we control the UI. Uh, obviously, we want to show a little bit more than this, right? So what we want to do is instead of sending back a raw string every time, what we want to do is send back an HTML page, what's called a template. And so uh, if you go back to the view app.js file, you'll see that the views directory right here is set as views. And that means that all the templates are stored in the views folder right here. So um, originally, this home.mustache file, I'm just going to tell uh, VS Code that this is HTML, is the original page that was loaded uh, before we swapped it out. And so what we want to do is create our own template um, to load instead. Uh, now you may be asking, what is this .mustache extension? Well, that, that stands for a uh, the mustache templating engine. And uh, what that means is this project is using the mustache templating engine in order to render data dynamically inside of an HTML document. So don't let this throw you off. It's just an HTML page. That's the important thing. But there are special placeholders. You may see here on line 7 on line 12, on line 4, that are that represent uh, data placeholders that can be injected by the uh, the templating engine, in this case, Mustache. So Mustache is one of a handful of templating engines that are very commonly used in a Node Express environment. Uh, another one is um, uh, Handlebars. Another one might be is uh, Pug. These are all templating engines that fundamentally do the same thing. They take an HTML document and they allow you to render data dynamically within that document. So we're going to take advantage of that today uh, using the mustache templating engine. So let's head over to the views directory <clears throat> and create a new template. Let's call it index, or no, let's call it landing actually, that's better. I want to create a new landing page. So landing.mustache, and again make sure we're using the mustache uh, extension. I'm going to cd back to the home directory just to so I don't forget. And inside the landing.mustache uh, template, uh, of course it's empty because we just created it. Again, keep in mind this is just an HTML document. So we do we, we set up an HTML uh, document here. 
<clears throat> I'm going to tell VS Code that this is HTML. And then let's just set up a very, very primitive uh, HTML uh, head tag and body tag and things like that. So now we have a head tag. Let's set up a body tag. And inside the body tag, I'm going to create a header one and say, uh, welcome to my site. And uh, in the main route, so the main JS route, what we want to do now is render this landing template rather than the raw string. So that's pretty simple. All we do is instead of send, we do render. Render. And we, we enter the name of the template landing that we want to render. So this is just going to grab the landing mustache template and then render that as HTML back to the browser. So what we can do now is we do turbo, we run the dev server, so turbo dev server. And then over here we now have welcome to my site. So now what we're doing is we are rendering an HTML document rather than just a raw string, which is a lot more, uh, a lot more we can add a lot more stuff now. So um, let's go ahead and turn off the dev server, so control C. So now what we want to do is actually make use of the templating engine and its its uh, its core purpose. So what that means is we can we can pass in data into this template and the template can then render that data dynamically. So let's go back to the main JS and create a data object. And then I'm going to uh, create a key called greeting and um, hello hello. Welcome to my portfolio site. Okay, so now we have a data object which has one key value pair. The key is greeting and that's the value, that string right there. So what we can do is we can pass in that data object into the rendering engine and then the template, the landing template, can then render from the data rather than just, just hard-coded strings. So what we do here is the double curly brace, which is the syntax of the mustache templating engine. It's a pretty conventional syntax. And then notice here I'm adding the key, the word greeting, which is the key from the data object rather than the entire string itself. And so now when I when I load the home page, I should see well, hello, welcome to my portfolio site which is the value that's plugged in for this key in the data. And so here we can just render the keys, or we can just type in the keys rather than typing in the entire strings, which is a lot more concise. So um, this data object here, we can add as many key value pairs as we want. So if I add another one, uh, in introduction, I am a web developer from California. I now have another key value pair that's being passed in through the data. So I can go back to my template and add more UI to render that uh, introduction like that. And then when I reload, I see that. And that's how the templating engine works at a very minimal level. There's a lot more to it, which we want to explore in the next video, like how to render um, you know, lists and uh, images and things like that. But this is a very brief intro to the, the templating engine, uh, in this case, Mustache. And a lot of templating engines basically work this way. So for example, uh, Handlebars works pretty much exactly the same way uh, with a couple more, um, couple more nuances, uh, which we'll get into in the next video. So, um, but before we wrap up on this video, let's go ahead and deploy one last time just to make sure everything is working on the server. So uh, turn off your server locally and we do turbo uh, deploy. And we just want to confirm that everything is, it looks the same on the staging environment as it does locally so that we know everything we're doing is um, accurate. <clears throat> oh.
All right, the deployment is up. Let's go ahead and copy and paste that into our browser. And I'm going to open that in a new tab. And we see the same thing here on staging as I do on localhost. It's exactly the same, which means it worked. Everything is so far so good. So uh, hopefully that's working on your end as well. And uh, in the next video, we want to continue um, working with the templating engine and rendering a few more types of data, a little bit more sophisticated data, and start building out the actual UI of our portfolio site. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.